Hi, so I was down in the bunker the other day and I went to use uh, my multimeter that I have down there, um, BM786. I turned it on and uh, it didn't work and I thought, well, I haven't used that it that much. So, so, you know, when you get that sudden sense of panic that goes through you thinking, oh, not again. Yeah, you guessed it. <sighs> The same shit happened to the same guy twice. Yep, it's completely Kamigatsa. Energizer Max batteries. There we go. Look at the uh, look at the leakage there. Fantastic. Expires 12th month 2030. Now, I don't actually know why I had a BM786 down in the bunker, because I don't use a multimeter down in the bunker that much, let alone like a, you know, a reasonably high-end one, like the uh, 786. I don't really need something like that down there, so I don't know. I, anyway, I should just use a cheaper, simpler meter down there, I guess. So yeah, they're obviously uh, not expired, but uh, they have expired, if you know what I mean. So, uh, and it looks like down in here, yeah, it's... Maybe it hasn't gotten onto the PCB in there, but... It's a bit of residue on the case here, so I think the best thing to do is to get the case off first before we get in there with the vinegar and go ballistic and uh, see what sort of damage. But it's not as bad as the other one, but yep, how can the same shit happen to the same guy twice? Anyway, the good news is I do actually now carry a spare battery door on the EV log dot store store so it's at evblog.store um yeah so i'm actually um actively carrying well <laughs> you know a spare part for this now because i've had um quite a few people actually um either had bad battery leakage like this or they've you know snapped the contacts in here they've broken off or whatever and they want a new uh battery um door so yeah i've actually got a stock of those now there's a little bit a little bit of <coughs> Crystalline residue. Oh, there's a fair bit crystalline residue in there. There we go. Look at that. Wow. Oh, sorry. I've got the dark, dark background here. So it's going to be overexposed a tad. Turn the iris down and there you go. You can see the nice little crystals in there. Beautiful, aren't they? And that's pretty crusty, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, once again, I probably wouldn't even bother to reuse that battery door now that I've I've actually ugh, ugh, should use gloves here I guess but wow look at that wow that's really come a guts hasn't it terrible Muriel eh, might be okay if I get in there and neutralize it with the with the vinegar but ugh, oh, oh what is that what is that that's like a oh that's a, that's the um, metal wrap from the outside of the battery okay wow yeah, check it out, the whole, that whole outside wrap of the battery has just come off. Yeah, I shouldn't use a dark baking tray like I've got here, because it really screws up the uh, exposure, the auto exposure on the, uh, auto exposure on the camera. So, yeah, I need a lighter background. You want something like this, because you don't want to uh, do this kind of stuff directly on your nice um, anti-static mat. So, yeah, you don't want to come with guts of there. Let's pour the white vinegar in, shall we? So I should always have some white vinegar on hand, and there we go, it's going to react. Yep. Boom, look at that. That will neutralize that and stop any potential further... But you've got to clean it out, of course. But that will should stop any further degradation. That metal has started to corrode, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I wouldn't advise reusing that. That looks like that is... Really, yeah, that's starting to corrode. So unless you want to re replate that, which, you know, if you're desperate, you have to, but I've got replacements, so, yeah, no wackers. All right, do we have any damage on the board here? No, just a little bit of crustiness up there. So we can just wipe, ah, uh, we could just, yeah, we'll just neutralize that and wipe it off. But, yeah, that's not, that's not a problem, so... I don't think there's an issue there. I greatly doubt it's got under the PCB there. But I might take the LCD off just to have a squiz. Oh, it's lucky I had a look here. Look at that. 
Wow, it did. The LCD contacts along there. Oh, that's terrible, Muriel. Wow. Yeah, lucky I took that off. Yeah, that's like that battery fluid like wicking under because there's, you know, a written like a quite a tight seal on there. And I presume the zebra strip, the poor zebra strip. Yep, yep, along there. That's going to need a clean as well. So you can see the little carbon conductors in there, but yeah, that'll that'll clean up okay. Oh, that's terrible. There we go, we'll neutralize that. Give that a scrub a scrub. Plating looks okay. We've got some blue residue left over. Some people said in the previous video that's a copper thing, as in a chemical reaction, to give you some so I think it was copper. Somebody mentioned it. Yeah, anyway, those contacts look like they're Gonna clean up nicely. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's gonna be an issue. We'll spray it with the 70% isopropyl. So 70% and then roughly 30% water. And uh, that should get that off pretty well. So yeah, I th I think we survived. I think we might have a winner winner chicken dinner here. And there is the zebra strip, or elastomeric connector, as they're called. And that's, uh, and that is like a really thick one. That's like uh, 13 millimeters <laughs> thickness or something. But uh, yeah, that's, that's really quite something. If you don't know how these work, they got conductive, those, those black um, things in there, like the alternate black ones there, they're actually conductive carbon strips in there separated by insulative rubber. I don't know how they bond them together. Do they screw them together? I don't know if you have an idea how they actually physically manufacture these things. But uh, yeah, each one of those is conductive. And good thing about these is that you don't have to line them up because each, because um, you might get like three, four or five of these or something per contact on your PCB. So it doesn't matter if they're uh, lined up or not. So you just shove your zebra strip or your elastomeric connector in there and uh and, and just wedge it against your pcb and bob's your uncle so yeah i'll just give that a bit of a clean and uh and that'll be that'll be hunky dory so there you go there's the pitch difference in those so you can see there's probably one two three yeah four of those there's four of those contacts per each contact of your um lcd there so you know it doesn't matter if this is like shifted that way a little bit doesn't matter if it's half hanging off you're at least going all you need is one of those contacts because these aren't heavy current they're, they're essentially no current whatsoever um driving an lcd like this so um yeah just one of those contacts and you've got like three or four of those per contact and as long as your space in between your contacts on there is you know not <laughs> the same thickness as this you don't risk any uh shorting of your elastomeric connector to your uh, pads there. So yeah, zebra strips or elastomeric connectors. They're cool bananas. So there's the contact in the bad one. Yeah, yeah, that's that's come a gutsa. Um, it'll work. You can put batteries back in it. It'll still work, but uh, yeah, nah. And I've got no shortage of them, really. So I'll just get a newbie <laughs> and whack them back in. Be like I bought one. So none of that alkaline rubbish anymore. I'll whack in these uh, rechargeable jobbies these are like um amazon basics ones or whatever i don't know um they're cheap as chips but they won't leak the magic fluid oh 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 maybe they're flat or it's dead let me see if they're charged i didn't actually check that could be just yeah it's very very dim segments i don't think they're charged <laughs> oh got them fresh out of the packet all right, I've charged those up. Let's whack them back in. And yeah, I can see the comments now. People going, oh, any loops, any loops, any loops. Oh, yeah, calm down, okay? Calm down. Didn't have any AAA any loops. This is all I've got. So here we go. Switch it on. And, ah, better. Yep. Oh, really? Oh. Is it actually faulty? Or is it just not like... I fast charge these suckers. Um, 
as in at 1.5 amps. <laughs> Doesn't like that. 4.3 volts, that should be plenty. Well, it's negative, so all the electrons are going to fall out. Um, hmm. So that's very interesting. Why does that fail? Why does that go on and then switch off? It doesn't pass the, like, self-test. It just switches off. That is... Oh, 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 I can see a night, night degree Celsius showed up there for a second. Oh, oh no, it's there. Oh, it's a contrast thing. Ah, okay. So that must be, I mustn't have dried that PCB um, for the LCD stuff. So I think that's the LCD contact. Um, well, the driver, because there was no contamination on that board. Like, you know, I cleaned it all off. There was no rotting on the contacts or anything, but maybe um, zebra strip is... Uh, did I not put it back in properly? You can see it down there, actually. Yeah, that's it there. I can give it a bit of a wiggle, 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 yeah. Put it back in properly, and the LCD's not making contact, perhaps. It's actually working. You can see it, right? So, but yeah, there's a contra a massive contrast problem. Or is that coming from the dry LCD drive circuitry? I'm gonna have to take this part again and inspect the board closer. It pays to do a better inspection, I guess. Or as I said, um, some of those um, contacts or one of those contacts is not good on the LCD. It could be like a row. No, cause you'd get the others. So I don't know. There's definitely nothing on this side, right? There's absolutely no... Oh, well, actually, yeah, there's a little bit left around there. Around that via there, but um, that's just part of the programming header there. I'll clean that up. But no, no, there's nothing on the bottom side here. So, and of course, this is not... Um, there's the main chipset down there. And they got our uh, thin thin hybrid resistor divider there. Neato. No, I got a flippity doodah on that. Ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, I didn't dry that adequately. I think that's still got some water um, slash isopropyl or <laughs> the because it was the uh, combo. I'll, I'll dry that out. So yeah, that would be maybe an impedance issue there. Oopsie. That was a bit dumb on my part, wasn't it? That is a trap for young players. So don't do that. Right. So that's dry. And down on the LCD down there. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to get the clip off and I'll get the LCD out. Just to make sure there's nothing on the other side there. Oh yeah, look. <laughs> that is not battery fluid. The, uh, that's, my, uh, that's my isopropyl water mix. That's, uh, that's gone in there, so you can see the contacts along there, and yeah, i got to dry all that out. Oh, there you go. Because LCD contacts are really high impedance, all right? They're, as I said, they're essentially like zero current, basically, which is why, you know, you can get a watch that lasts on a button cell, can last for 10 years, right? is because then when the LCD is updating once a second, is because LCDs take bugger all power. It's basically the capacitance of the thing when it switches. That's basically the only uh, consumption uh, of an LCD. There is no like um, static uh, power consumption on an LCD because it's just an electric field. So I'm gonna give all this a wiper dipe. Use the shirt, use the t-shirt. It's the best method. Tongue at the right angle. Uh. And of course, with LCDs, you can just rub your finger along there. And look, we can make them all come up. Isn't that neat? Or oh, not all of them, but we can make some of them come up. Neat. And it'll hold that because, as I said, they're ridiculously high impedance. And it's just an electric field. So the static art oh, slowly fading. No! The humanity. And uh, yeah, because it's the electric field there. So the charge just stayed there on the LCD and uh, lights up the segments. But um yeah, oops, I didn't think the spray got in there. Um, so, yeah, let that be a lesson to you. Our dry, <laughs> elastomeric zebra strip. There you go, no wackers. We'll just dry that, because you can get, um, by the way, you should 
wipe these things because your fingers like can get like oil and contaminants and stuff on them so uh, yeah just be aware of that and if you want to see how the backlight on this works it's on this top board here which board to board interconnection see three side emitting leds there and they've just put the white silk screen there to make it a bit more reflective and uh, then we've got the that's our little diffuser for the backlight so it's actually a really nice solution I don't know if I've torn down the well I have but I don't know if I've done on camera but the uh, BM786 it's rather uh, rather quite nice how they do that so yeah that board just sits in there like that and then clips over there like that and goes down nice board to board interconnect and it's got the uh, front panel uh, switches on there and that is the backlight for the LCD so now we can actually let's just wipe this again get rid of any contaminants from our fingers put our LCD in there like that Wow, oh, beautiful that should go back on there clip in like that beautiful nice design aspect of this is that you see they use this top clip as a hold as a top holder for the uh, PCB there so yeah really nice touch for the designers of the uh, 786 zebra strip one last wipe PCB one last wipe so there should now be hopefully no uh, lower lowish impedance path because remember you don't need much <laughs> when you're talking about LCDs so yeah that'll really upset the apple cart if you have a low impedance on there so I'll screw it back together unfortunately it's not easy to power up it's just got some pads I'd have to temporarily put pads on there and it's annoying and these switches on the front panel in there <whistles> I just spent six months in a leaky boat looking just to keep afloat okay before we let's just keep that haha -ha, there you go winner winner chicken dinner I haven't screwed the board in yet but there you go that fixed it there you go a low impedance path on the LCD you can come a gutsa like that so just be careful when you're spraying around your IPA willy-nilly like that um it's yeah you can come a gutsa there you go <laughs> and get in places you don't uh, expect it to and uh, it can cause a problem so all right I'll put this back together no workers so there you have it that is back together and serial number 21103538 is repaired so there you go I hope you enjoyed that repair video and I don't know other youtubers might have hidden a dumb mistake like that but no I put it in leave it in so you can learn something I hope you appreciate that that uh, yeah if you get a low impedance on your LCD then yeah that can cause you to come a gutsa like that and get hardly any contrast I thought it was like completely off but you know you have to like test it right at the lowest angle you can see that the PCB was still working it was still functional but uh, yeah the LCD drive just wasn't enough to overcome all of the um, impedance <laughs> all that fluid on uh, what impedance that is I don't know doesn't matter but uh, yeah it was low so there you go I'm sure this thing absolutely works so what I'm going to do is rather than take this back down to the bunker because I think this is too good for the bunker um, I'm going to give this away so young whippersnapper you have to be a young whippersnapper only and you know what that means young whippersnapper no old whippersnappers trying to pretend to be young whippersnappers I want a young whippersnapper who's in Australia because I'm a tight ass and I don't want to pay the overseas bloody postage so if you're a young whippersnapper in Australia leave it in the comments down below why you want one and uh, I guess people thumbs it up and that's what happened last time um, and the winner got a meter so the winner will get this meter so there you go hope you enjoyed that how can the same shit happen to the same guy twice well, apparently it can if you use freaking alkalines in your me. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. As always, you can discuss down below in the comments or over on the EV blog forum. And you can get my merch at the EVblog.store. Catch you next time. Hello.